Hi everybody, I'm Jordan Rolfes from Beagle Rampant Productions, and today I've got an interesting sort of video for you guys here. So, I have a friend who worked for Nintendo of America in the marketing department during the Wii U's life cycle. And I'll admit, okay, the um, tenure there maybe didn't last super long, because the Wii U didn't last very long there, but... One of his major goals was to develop a team to propose an Animal Crossing game called Animal Crossing U, with the U actually being a play on Wii U and University. He wanted to sort of combine uh, the city elements of city folk with uh, sort of university sort of feel, because his favorite time in his life was his time at university, City Folk is his favorite game ever, so he wanted to sort of bring those things together to create a really awesome project here. He gathered together a team to go ahead and make this proposal, and their main goal was to go ahead and get this game announced at E3 2014. Of course, as you know, that actually didn't happen, and I mean, E3 2014 for Nintendo was kind of meh. It wasn't as bad as E3 2015, so I gotta give him props there, but anyway, he decided now that Animal Crossing New Horizons on the Nintendo Switch is released, he was able to go ahead and share me the contents of this proposal, the what this game for the Wii U would have looked like, and how it would have felt, and all the things you could do. Now, that being said, there are a lot of restrictions on what I can and can't mention about Animal Crossing U. First of all, I am not allowed to give any names at all. I'm not allowed to give my friend's name. I'm not allowed to mention any name of anybody on the proposal team. I can't mention who he proposed the project to. And I can tell you guys he broke every single rule that you can possibly break in proposing a game to Nintendo. This is by no means the normal proposal process to get a game to Nintendo, but that's really all I can say. I can't say what rules he broke, how he broke them. I can't give any specifics onto that, just that don't use this video as an instruction manual for proposing a game to Nintendo, where we can only focus on what the actual content of Animal Crossing U was going to be. And that actually kind of makes me wonder, huh, was he even really allowed to share this information with me to begin with? But regardless, he shared the information with me. I'm really excited to share it with you guys. This is going to be a fun one, so sit back, relax, and get ready for some Animal Crossing University action. You know, it's been too long since we've heard that theme song. Uh, I gotta do more gaming content on this channel. We haven't heard that song in too long. I love doing gaming content. I need to get my rear into gear with getting you guys some more gaming content on this channel here, but... Yeah, Animal Crossing University. Before I jump into the actual contents of the game, I do have to clarify that you're gonna see some pretty jacked up images here. A lot of these proposal images, they flat out aren't good. It's going to be a lot of Google image searches, kind of badly photoshopped with some Animal Crossing city folk images. It just isn't going to look good. The original characters are kind of an unholy mess. You're going to see bad artwork here. And that wasn't the actual vision for the proposal. The team had a very talented artist working for them, but the night before the proposal, she was arrested because apparently their lead artist for the proposal was actually a high-profile gang member. My friend always had that kind of luck there. I vowed I would never go to Vegas with him. 
because he's just that kind of guy with that sort of luck, you know. Your artist is a gang member who has to get arrested, and for good measure, the cops had to confiscate her laptop, and of course I had to razz him. Why didn't you back up your files, brah? And he's like, oh my god, Jordan, we did back up the files, but uh, apparently every single one of them were corrupted, so they couldn't use them. I imagine swear words were said, and they had to scramble to get some sort of image to show the folks at Nintendo, hey, this is kind of what we're envisioning. You know, you gotta give something of a visual backup there, but if you're wondering, wow, these images don't look very professional, well, they were supposed to, they had a great artist on the team, she just, um was very, very scary, and yeah, some of the... I met her once, and she scared me, and she kind of hated my guts. Not the best situation to be in there, but going on to actual Animal Crossing U, the actual contents of the proposal there. So, effectively, you would be living in a larger version of the downtown area of City Folk, i.e. this is the university, and of course the player gets to name their university, and you would be living in a dormitory situation with some other animals, and you can, as in previous Animal Crossing titles, upgrade your living situation, and you would pay these upgrades to the Dean of Students, who is Little Isabel. Everyone loves Isabel, right? And Tom Nook is definitely in this game. We'll get to his role in a little bit. He serves a very interesting and kind of cool role in this game, so that's really fun. But um, effectively, the first upgrade, you would be able to choose your animals. The second upgrade, you would have your own small little apartment. And the third upgrade is you would have your own house on the university property, so... It's kind of a cool uh, sort of thing. It's part of uh, university life, living in the dormitory. I, I didn't live in a dormitory because I ain't got no money, you know. You see what I work with here, man, so I didn't do that, but a lot of people who go to college do, and it's a major part of the experience there. And so I mentioned uh, gameplay. You're living in sort of a huge downtown metropolitan kind of area, as most universities these days are small cities in and of themselves. So what about things like fishing and digging for fossils and bug catching? Well, there would be an area called University Park. A lot of universities have green spaces, and this is no exception here in Animal Crossing U. You could go ahead and do your fishing, your nature stuff, all within this little University Park area here. And of course, this is university, so you can totally take classes if you want to. And that's sort of interesting. This came from my friend. He was never at class. He was always skipping class. So it's interesting that class would actually be an optional thing in Animal Crossing University. And when we say class in the context of this game, we actually mean playing some pretty sweet minigames. It's a lot of minigame collections for your various courses uh, that you can take at the university here. A good example of this would be Blathers, who runs the Antiquities Department. Blathers now takes care of appraising your fossils, any fossils you find at University Park. He can tell you what it is, and you can sell those to the Nooklings, Tommy and Timmy. They are running the big university store. You go to Tommy and Timmy, they can go ahead and purchase anything that Blathers appraises. And you can also play a fossil digging minigame, where you can... It looks effectively like you're, you have your shovel, you're in a big open area, and then an X will appear. You run over, dig up what's on the X before it vanishes. After that minigame, you can have Blathers go ahead and appraise all of them, and you'll have the option either to donate them to his museum, or you can go over to the Nooklings and sell them for some bells there. Blathers also takes care of art appraisal. Crazy Red is still going to be present in this game, where you can go ahead and buy some artwork from him, and then roll the dice and hope, oh my gosh, I hope Crazy Red did not give me a forgery. 
and you can actually do artwork with the Able Sisters now. So we have three Able Sisters. This game would introduce an artist Able Sister known as Fable. Yeah, my friend is so creative with naming things, isn't he? And you could go ahead and do some artistic uh, mini-games. She would sometimes give you a prop. You can go ahead and do a design based on that. And she could give a determination if you meet certain criteria, if it's a masterpiece, okay, or not as okay. And if it's a masterpiece, you would have the option to either sell it to the Nooklings for Bigga Bells, or you could donate it to Blathers and his museum there. So that's sort of the kind of idea they're going for. In terms of uh, fishing and bug collecting, Blathers never really liked fishing and bug collecting, and my friend really understood that, and my friend also wondered, huh, they never really had a bat animal here in Animal Crossing, so our new friend Baxter is the guy taking care of all of your fishing and bug collecting needs. Another really cool feature that they were going to have, college athletics. It's really popular all throughout the world. Everyone loves college athletics, except for me, who's kind of a very lukewarm fam on anything sports in general there. But anyway, there's the University Stadium, and our buddy Aziz is back. Aziz is your coach to greatness here at the University Stadium. We haven't seen a Z since the Nintendo GameCube era, so it is so exciting to see this cute little sporty lion guy back here getting ready to coach your team to awesomeness. I absolutely love little Aziz. And you would have all sorts of various options for sports. You can do US football slash rugby, and it's not like, oh, you live in the United States, you're not allowed to play rugby. No, you can choose between football or rugby. Some people if you're not an American football fan, you can pick rugby, etc. If you don't really like rugby, but you love the Bengals, <laughs> say that with a straight face, you can go ahead and pick U.S. football. You can also do tennis and baseball slash cricket. A lot of that looked really cool, and there were going to be huge worldwide tournaments. So the Wii U is an online system, so they were going to really take advantage of the Wii U's online capabilities here and have some seasonal tournaments. And they understood, you know, you can't have a big football thing during the Ohio State-Michigan game. So, yeah, they were definitely going to take all of that stuff into consideration there. And uh, if you come out on top, if your university wins the tournament, you would get a trophy. And the proposal is really not clear on what the trophy can actually do for you, aside from bragging rights. So it really looks like the trophy was just going to offer you a whole bunch of bragging rights, and hey, nothing wrong with that at all, man. And uh, let's see, what else do we got? The proposal was really lengthy, the email he sent me there, so I just, you know, wrote down notes with the greatest hits there. Um, Brewster, yes, Brewster. His role is very interesting. So, Brewster no longer runs the coffee shop known as The Roost. Instead, he's running... Uh, it's straight up a bar. You can go ahead and booze it up with Brewster. This area will be open from midnight to 4 a.m., and you could get something known as Super Soda, which would make your character look kind of crazy, and it would invert the controls. Effectively, the Super Soda is booze. You're boozing it up with Brewster, which sounds pretty cool. I mean, I wouldn't mind boozing it up with Brewster there. But hey, I am glad that you can booze it up with Tom Nook in New Horizons. Come on, let's be real. We all know that's not soda that he's drinking. And with that, you might be wondering, okay, but Brewster's iconic song is for the coffee shop. And yes, for his bar, they were going to give him a more jazzy thing. So what about the Brewster song and the coffee shop that everybody loves? Well, that would be going to his love interest known as Rista. She's now taking care of the roost, and she has that oh so glorious song. You know, it's like when you go to a restaurant when they're kind of getting ready to close, and you're like the only person in there. You can just feel the magic essence of that song. And, mm, 
it's absolutely wonderful. And of course there would be a, a side quest, where you would do a little bit of fetch questing to go ahead and get Brewster and Rista together, and it sounds really cute, so that was a really cool feature they were going to have in there, and yeah, okay, you, mm, super soda boozing it up with Brewster, seems a little adult, but the proposal team understood that, hey, it's not just kids playing Animal Crossing, you know? Animal Crossing is not just for kids. There is a heavy adult following with Animal Crossing as well, so, okay, yeah, you can edge it up a little bit. A lot of young adults love playing Animal Crossing, so... Yeah, they were definitely trying to appeal to that audience, and also, you know, university. Uh, yeah, they're trying to go for someone, for a fan base that, okay, maybe the series isn't directly addressing as actively. And of course, the game was going to go ahead and use Amiibo. And uh, my friend actually, he knew Amiibo was coming. He knew they were planning on announcing Amiibo for E3 2014. And he actually, they gave him all the marketing stuff so he could go ahead and develop a battle plan, but um, he actually got to play with the prototypes that they made the previous year, and he said they were an unholy mess. He said they were an absolute catastrophe to work with, they were glitchy as all hell, so he did, was not a fan of the prototypes, but once they started getting Amiibo refined, he, he really enjoyed it, and... You have Nerdy Rosie here, oh my gosh, imagine what this would have looked like if they actually had a talented artist behind it, oh my gosh. The way that Amiibos would be integrated in Animal Crossing U would be, you would touch your Amiibo to the Wii U gamepad's touch point, and it would go ahead and assign you a decoration slash costume theme, and each day you touch that Amiibo, you would get a new uh, piece of that set. So for example, you touch your awesome nerdy rosy amiibo there, and it would go ahead and assign you the Egyptian theme. Each day that you touch your nerdy rosy amiibo, you would get either a piece of the flooring, a wallpaper, a piece of the costume, a sarcophagus, etc, etc, until you end up completing that set. Once you go ahead and complete that set, each time that you touch that amiibo in subsequent days, you would get a thousand bells per daily touch. So that's sort of the idea that they were going through for amiibo integration for Animal Crossing U. And I've been teasing you guys with the role Tom Nook was going to play in this game, and he had a lot of fun developing uh, Tom Nook's role. and. Effectively, you would be able to see Tom Nook wandering around the university. He is the dean of the entire university, and you could actually go ahead and get into a bit of a prank war with him. After a few conversations with Nook, he would go ahead and develop a relationship a little bit, and then you would go and talk to some of your colleagues and roommates, etc., and they would go ahead and say, yeah, let's go ahead and prank Tom Nook. So you could go ahead and decorate Nook's office all in post-it notes. That's one of the pranks you could do on Nook. And Nook actually remembers what it was like to be young. He remembers his college days and having fun. He's not a stick-in-the-mud sort of dean. So obviously, he has to prank you back. So you cover his office in post-it notes, he replaces all of your tools with useless rubber duplicates. So you go ahead and you do your Blathers archaeology minigame there for your antiquities class, and you're using a rubber shovel, unbeknownst to you, and Blathers is all like, What are you doing mocking my archaeology? You kids, you don't even have no respect for the old ways, etc., etc., and Blathers would be freaking out. It, it sounded absolutely awesome, so the... Tom Nook Prank War, I'm totally here for it. Oh, that sounded absolutely awesome. But another thing you could do with Nook as you sort of develop your relationship with him, he would go ahead and give you a one million bell fee to go ahead and join this ancient society from the Greek letters. You gotta have Greek life at 
university. I mean, I was never in Greek life, but my friend was, so of course, you gotta have some sort of uh, secret uh, fraternity slash sorority society. This particular one was mixed gender. You would have mystical creatures in this society. So, Kappen will be there, because Kappen, remember, isn't a turtle. He's a Japanese monster known as the Kappa, and the only way to defeat a Kappa is to make it bow to you. And of course, Kappen will be your driver, the bus driver, to help you visit other people's universities as well. I forgot to mention Kappen was still definitely going to be present in this game here. There was going to be a European wyvern, so a wyvern, eh, it's basically a two-legged dragon. It was often used uh, as a symbol of bravery. You see the image pop up in Roman uh, times. Uh, I think it had something to do with the Roman conquests of the British Isles. They used wyverns as sort of a source of inspiration and bravery. I think that's the mythology behind the wyvern, but basically wyverns, two-legged dragons, they're cool looking. And there was going to be a key ring in the mythical creatures theater. And for those of you who don't know what a key ring is, it's a large creature that has a horn. And between Chinese and Japanese art, there's debate, does it have one horn or two horns? And it is a very peaceful and loving creature. It would not walk on the grass for fear of destroying the grass and killing any of the insects there. And it was very peaceful and loving. It would often herald the coming of a sage or a wise person to an area. And, okay, if you're unjust and wicked, okay, the Kirin is going to go after you there. And you guys may remember Kirin as the mascot for Kirin Ichiban, the Japanese brewing company. And they also have other drinks available as well from Kirin. And they sponsor Pirates of the Caribbean at Tokyo Disneyland. Can never go wrong with that there. And the word Kirin is actually connected to the giraffe. If you look up a Japanese translation for the word giraffe, you'll often see Kirin as a listed option there. So the proposal team decided, okay, even in Japanese art, the Kirin is often depicted more like a deer, so... Yeah, the proposal team went and, again, the artist was arrested, so we don't have an actually good-looking representation here, but they went with basically a mix between a giraffe and a unicorn here. And, of course, there was also going to be a European Pegasus in the Mystical Creatures Theater, because, you know, it's Animal Crossing, you gotta have a Pegasus. You have so many cool horse animal villagers, you gotta have a Pegasus, you know? It's been too long since we've had some Pegasus action in Animal Crossing. But, effectively, I mean, there is so much more to this proposal, but this video's kind of going on for a little bit long, so... I hopefully you guys have a good idea for what Animal Crossing U was going to go ahead and look like. And again, I'm not allowed to give any info on why this was rejected, or even if Nintendo actually thought this idea was interesting. And I am certainly not allowed to connect this to Amiibo Festival. Yeah, Amiibo Festival. Because that's such a great video game, I'm glad we have a video game where literally there is a part where Tom Nook and his friends are wondering, huh, we couldn't decide what to play, so we just ended up wasting our time. It's almost like that's the exact same experience you're feeling when you're playing Amiibo Festival. But yeah, no, I can't mention that, oh, you know, anything related to Amiibo Festival. He didn't give me any information on that either, but I am allowed to speculate. And my speculation says this Animal Crossing U game was going to cost a lot of money. The Wii U yeah, wasn't doing super well to begin with, but they liked the idea of combining Animal Crossing and Amiibo. So they decided to barf up Amiibo Festival, and barf up Amiibo Festival they did. I can't imagine anyone actually having fun playing Amiibo Festival. It's so 
nothing. It really is that waste of time that Tom Nook spoke so eloquently about. But anyway, that's Animal Crossing U for the Nintendo Wii U, a proposal that obviously didn't get taken up, never got made, but now that Animal Crossing New Horizons is out, my friend was able to go ahead and at least give me the contents of this proposal, and the game sounded really cool. And I'll admit, I'm kind of enjoying New Horizons. I was a little concerned about the announcement of New Horizons, but I'm actually enjoying the game uh, quite a bit. Uh, New Horizons is definitely a fulfilling and rewarding experience, and I'm glad if they had to take Animal Crossing in any direction, I'm uh, glad that they took it in the direction that they did. Thank you guys so much for watching. It was really great uh, mentioning all this fun stuff. My friend loved uh, sharing all of this information, and he's still an avid fan of Animal Crossing. He loves New Horizons, and the entire proposal team loves New Horizons. I don't know if the arrested artist, I mean, she's not going to be able to play New Horizons. I don't think they let you play video games in jail. I don't know. and. I'm sure she can't really broadcast, I'm a huge Animal Crossing fan, that may not make you the most popular person in prison there, but regardless, there's a lot of love for Animal Crossing, it's one of the most vibrant fandoms out there, so it's always fun to talk about Animal Crossing. Thank you guys so much for watching, I'm Jordan Rolfes from Beagle Rampant Productions, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Vero, Vero is the one, and Instagram at Jorn, J-O-R-N, Vaughn, V-O-N, B-E-A-G-L-E. -E. Thank you so much for watching. You guys know you're the best fans of any YouTuber in the world. Thank you once again. I love you guys. Y'all are the best, and it's always good to chill out with some Animal Crossing. And if you don't mind me, I'm going to go ahead and booze it up with Brewster for a little bit. Love you guys. Bye!